Squirreline. He's almost at 70 through 7 play days. That's yeah. almost double digits every single He's match. He's been very, very reliable. Technically, he's already above that because he played six matches and he's at 67 kills. He's averaging over 10 frags. That's exactly what? That's 11? Technically 11.0 something or other. Yeah. So not, not too bad. All, all I know is his team's not giving him a hard time. No. And when you've got Julio has been moved to that retirement role <laughs> of support, who yeah. used to be one of the best performers on the team, you know that... Uh, Things are still going quite well. Clubhouse is going to be our match. Not a surprise. The system is there. And Nip is a very fine team they, on Clubhouse. They have played it almost every other day. Mm -hmm. Like, literally every chance they can, with it. the exception of one day. They played it every other day. They played it three times out of six play days. So, Damn. now the fourth time. So, they're, they're playing every chance they get. Damn. Means a lot of footage, though, for Elevate to study if they uh, get something out of that. Because Nip haven't always won either. No. So, it's definitely been a great map for Nip, but not the best map for Nip. So, Elevate have a chance here. They haven't shown their clubhouse. So, they have uh, the position to bring out all the surprises, but it's not like Nip's going to go, no, I don't think we want to play that against a team that hasn't shown it. They're like, we live on clubhouse. We live and die on it. So, it is, uh, it is up to Elevate to put <laughs> up the punches. <laughs> Every single Nip matchup that Kix and I have casted this season has been, has been clubhouse. Because we have the fixed schedule, so, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, you and I did one together. Yeah. But, but that didn't really change because it was auto ban that day. Yeah. So play day number one, <laughs> play day number one was Nip versus Phase, and Phase won seven five. Yeah, that was one of their less good, and, but it was yeah. still close to a tie. Play day number three, Nip uh, defeated Team One seven five on Clubhouse. Not much of an accomplishment at the moment, unfortunately. No. Team One the way they are. Uh, on play day number five, Ninjas in Pajamas <laughs> defeated uh, or drew an Ints on six six. So this is the scoreline right now. They lost to Phase seven five. They defeated one seven five, and they drew Ints. So their six, average is six. is six six. Yeah. So their average is six six exactly. So they, they should have eighteen they should round victories, and that's before they knew what the map would be. Nice. We got that yesterday as well for uh, TSM, I believe. Nice. 69% for Ninjas in Pajamas. Numbers are crazy. As I go back to being a child and laughing at such things, Elevate 22%, 9% if you think it's going to be a draw. And over the uh, over the 36 rounds that have been played by Ninjas in Pajamas, they've needed every single round in Clubhouse, and they are 18 and 18. So yeah. yes, you're, you're very correct. They're averaging 6-6. They're just going to go nuts this round. They're going to go, you know, we learned, uh, you know, out of the last three times we played it, let's just, let's just go nuts. Yeah. Elevate tend to be uh, an unpredictable team, I think, too, as well, for a lot of these teams. Not necessarily being as prepared, because they're not like the same pool of players that they've been playing against for season after season, and I think that works to Elevate's advantage. So the fact that also they haven't played this map, if they are bringing something that is str strategically sound, um, but works well, I, I think Nip will end up possibly yeah, in another draw situation, just because Nip have shown enough that they should be capable of relatively predicting what's going to happen. Because I doubt Nip is going to change a huge amount every week. Yeah. So. I mean, obviously, it, it, things have worked for Nip. They lost their first matchup, and then they won, and then they drew. And they drew against mm -hmm. Ince, the best team, or at the time, the best team in the region. They and a good lost team on Clubhouse. Phase. They lost to Phase, but then they barely beat Team 1. Will we see a bar defense, though? This is not necessarily something that's come out from Nip, but it's something that's come out uh, possibly against Nip. I don't remember if uh, against Ince it was, uh, if that was the one that brought out the bar defense that was successful. I wish I had all this compiled. Team, yeah, I know. I, I, there's there's I, stats that we could pull, but it's just like takes half an hour to pull that. It's like uh, all of this together. But uh, Team 1 and INTZ are like the teams to bring the bar defenses. Will we see Ninjas and Pajamas go like, you know what? We could do, we could do that, too. We could do that. Well, there was no bar stock defense from either Nip or Ince when they played each other. Oh, uh, so it wasn't that five. Play day number three, Nip versus one. There was one lone bar defense came out from Team One. Yeah, it's, it's their thing as well. They, they did it, I believe, before Ince, but and then it's spreading. And then Nip phase had only Church and Cash and one gym, so they just kept going back and forth, back and forth. Back happens and when you uh, forth. are sucking in a site. Forth. If you're doing well, you can't do that. So. It makes sense. I guess that's. I always think that's interesting. The, the being an asymmetrical game. That's one of the asymmetrical aspects. Is that if you are successful on defense, you're punished for it. If you're successful on attack, you're not really. Sure. I mean, you are if uh, if somehow they go to a better site. But who goes to a better site after they lose? Right. They that's true. they tend to go to their worst site or continue on the same site. Well, I was gonna say. I feel like yesterday uh, in both NA and EU, we saw teams not going back to the same site. They would immediately yeah. change it up and on maps like Bank, on maps like Clubhouse. Uneven yeah. a map like Consulate. Well, maps like Bank don't win attack anyways, except for CEO. So it's true. It's very true. It was it was a, it's a strange one. At least we had variety last night in NA. So hopefully we'll get something similar today in variety and not just Clubhouse four times. But 
Now, we do have everybody in the lobby. We have had everybody in the lobby for quite a while. So we're just yeah. waiting uh, until our wonderful Latin American brethren will give us the call to, start, say nothing. to start up the match. Uh, today, did the patch notes go live today? Are the ADS changes in effect Ooh. today? I'm not sure. I, I I had heard it was gonna be like it was gonna come out in like two days. So I think it would. I, think I know there tomorrow. was an update today. I'm pretty sure. I mean, it's the a Tuesday. ADS, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I woke up really late, so yeah. I'm I haven't really been. Kept, I made some really wonderful dinner, and uh, I uh, yeah. I mean, Kix is sick, so that's why you're yeah, here. He is a uh, very well very, wishes out there. Very very ill. <laughs> he is he is not literally so bedridden. So yeah. and I, unfortunately we didn't have a spare camera. To yes. Set up in there. Unfortunately we couldn't have like him like from the hospital bed into his room. Hey guys, here's Kix. Uh, hey everybody. Uh, that would have been a start. great. That would have been a great cast. It would have been a terrible cast. Yeah. It's really, really yeah. dreadful. Yeah. But I've casted with all three of you now in the span of 24 hours. That's actually pretty good because uh, we actually don't get to cast together very often. No. So it's actually worked out pretty we nice. We had USN and then we had uh, just one. Just one so far. And that was because you were sick and you couldn't cast Thursday. So Kix casted Thursday and then you cast a Tuesday yeah. with me. We, we probably should all just not get sick. I mean, I have managed to avoid the flu and yeah. slash be sick, which is excellent timing wise because now if I get sick it's going to be directly over six invitational. So Perfect. Well, see I, what I really should have done is I should have yeah. gotten sick like a week or two ago so that it would be all cleared up by now. You would have got something else. Coronavirus yeah. going around. Uh and it's like now it's if I get sick it'll likely be in like a day or two which will be the end of January which means that I'll start to get sick at the start of February which means that I'll be hitting my stride right before the invitation. It's great. It's I'm just great. putting my money on being sick during the whole thing. That's that's part of the course now. I try really hard to not be sick. I've been sick in over a year. If you're sick and you're going to Six Invitational, please cover your mouth. Please. It is a very tight knit place with a lot of people getting a lot of sick. That they refer to it as the land flu that yes, uh, players because, tend to well, get. Well, I mean, there's like thousands of people. That's what I'm saying. Like, just and they're all wear, like, wear a little mask. I'm really bad for it as well because, like, at like meet and greets and stuff like that, I like to shake people's <laughs> hands, and it's like I gotta stop doing that because yeah, it's like fist bumps only. Right? Yeah, fist bumps only. It's like I'll fist bump you. I'm not shaking your hand. I'm going to start coughing on my fist. I'm not shaking. Why would you do such a thing? That's a disgusting noise. Yeah. Just for you guys. I don't know. I really don't know why we're waiting. They're literally not I, even talking yeah, to each other even, at this point. Yeah, it's been like three minutes. I would uh, think they'd like to play right now, so. Huge shout out to you, though, uh, for waking up because I almost had to solo cast. Yeah, like, I... Like, literally, like, 20 minutes before up. we went live, I almost had to yeah. solo cast. So they actually had... They Oh, apparently we're in the game. Yeah, cool. <laughs> uh, surprise, surprise, we're already banning ops. Uh, all right. Well, Mavericks ban first. That is very okay. That's very Latim. Um Yeah, so because uh, because of illnesses and traveling. I know. I, people are disappointed now. They probably wanted to see you solo cast. They're like, now we got to listen to Emzo. So. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I have no problem solo casting, but oh, apparently you're coming back to. <laughs> this is. This he, is looks so, he looks so pensive. He's just like. Yeah. Maybe it was an accidental start. They went, meant to type something and hit S to start typing. No, oh, because it just it skipped ahead. We were in the lobby, and the next thing you know, it's just we're in the game. Yeah. That's that's interesting. I wonder if it was a uh, uh, related to the feed, because for those of you who are unaware, we get a feed from Latin America. Oh. Okay, so it looks like they had started, but then lost a the player, and that's why we're just catching up. Operators are banned, by the way, are Maverick, Capitao. Mira and Echo. Right. Well, there we go. Now we know who's banned. So, step one complete, and uh, we just get, like, <laughs> it's not a lot. It's not a lot in America without mandatory it like, it like <laughs> it's just, I don't even know. I'm in disbelief. We go in, and then it's just like immediately remake. Come right back to us. And it's I'm like, surprised it didn't ah. just go straight to remake. Like that was <laughs> that's, that's, that's the best that's part. Classic. Was, the best part was that when we cut away, I could hear production like just like I guess like laughing at the fact that like yeah. the timing, and I'm just like sitting there being like. Mother of God. That's, that's why we don't keep tables back there. They just Mother end up God. flipped all the time. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, while we get ready, the operator bands were like Mira, Echo, Capitao, Maverick. I think yep. pretty standard. Um, pretty much. I mean, Capitao is one that like does get banned fairly often in Clubhouse, but not as a Clubhouse-specific thing. It's more just, I mean, it, it is and it isn't, but it's more like uh, we didn't have anything else we needed to ban more. Yeah. Really. I uh, I would like to talk for a second here, other than the fact that, you know, it was it's really wonderful that... Um, it's really wonderful that you uh, came in to obviously stop me from having to solo cast. But while I was waiting um, to hear if uh, if I need to solo cast, it was nice uh, to make a. I made like an English like dinner. It was I took like a bunch of mushrooms, you put them in a nice deep pan with some like butter, then some tomatoes, then some onions, some baked beans, 
some, uh, I like these vegan kielbasa sausages. Not good. That's what happens when you get diabetes, folks. It's not fun. Not good. Well, I mean, I, I could have just eaten normal protein. <laughs> uh, eggs, parsley, uh, garlic. So make sure put to... Put anything um, else in it? I didn't put anything else you in need, it. You need to do a cooking stream like Milos does, then, apparently. No, it's fine. Yeah. His computer is really close to his kitchen. My computer is at the opposite side of my mm. flat from my kitchen. Like, it is not close. Well, if it runs hot enough, you can just... I mean, I guess I could do it like with maybe like a phone or like I could move it over, but like literally, <laughs> like literally, like his computer is like, yeah, this that's is true. his, this is his that's counter, true. this but is that, his kitchen counter. That's, like, that's right. probably by design because they know he doesn't want to really be, you know, separate the two, whether he's doing a stream or not. That's true. So. He's, he's done a fair bit of cooking streams. Cooking streams are fine. It's just, I feel like, like cooking is super easy. Here's how you, here's how you cook. Literally get yeah. butter. You get olive oil, you get salt, pepper, you get garlic. You can now make basically everything. Okay, that's it. That's really it. That's like the trick to cooking. Like, everybody's like, how do you do this? It's like, you fry something and like, or you, or you saute you something in oil. You heat it and season it. Yeah, that's it. Like, congratulations. Now, like, yeah. basically everything is done. Obviously, like, you get into other things, like, you use, like, onions or shallots. I mean, you like, described how I make toast, too. Screw it, toaster. I'm just going to do it that way. Just just butter, olive oil, <laughs> throw it in the frying pan. I mean, that's the thing, is it's like, I, I had the very Italian breakfast. I got some, like, mozzarella, like, buffalo mozzarella, and some, like, prosciutto. And then I got like some toast and then just like olive oil and, and balsamic vinaigrette. And then I ate all that together. And and open a little restaurant. It was really nice. It's very easy to cook. It's just, it's overwhelming for people at the start, right? Yeah. It's like, literally, if you were like, I don't know how to cook. Like I said, olive oil, butter, salt, pepper, yeah. garlic. You, you eat those, them you those, look similar you to those you've five things. You basically cook like half of half of anything you want to you wanna cook. Maybe get a little bit of like lemon or lime. Yeah. Maybe a little bit of like chili pepper, like cayenne pepper. A little bit of paprika. That's what you, you do it to taste. Parsley, basil, you're good. You got everything now. <laughs> At this point, there's Don't nothing else to do it. Good. Yeah. It's like, uh, it's white people cuisine. One on one. And we're just waiting on one person, just so you know. So we're not yes. obviously just like taking over this as a cooking stream. It's just literally waiting on the one Ninjas Pajamas player to come in. And uh, and then we'll be get cracking again. Hopefully, not another uh, false start. Uh, I, I think it was just a Ninjas Pajamas player dropping uh, for whatever reason. I think Psycho disconnected because yeah. he's the one that's not in the lobby right now. Yeah. So. It happens, might have had to restart his PC. Um, sometimes a crash is like more than just the mm. game. If it's just the game, you know, you usually come back in time, but if it's more than just the game, you gotta reboot everything, and then you gotta put on the anti-cheat, you gotta do all that stuff. Obviously, we wanna make sure people are playing legit, so it takes a minute, and uh... It takes a village yeah. to, to grow, man. I suppose we don't have like a village map at some point. All I want to do is talk about like cooking stuff now. Like I yeah. just, this is how I'm an adult. I bought a salad spinner and a. You were hyped about that too. Yeah, I was so excited. Yeah. I bought a salad spinner, which like a salad strainer. I guess it's like where you can put things in and you like spin it and it gets all the water and moisture out of it. And then I bought a kettle as well, like this really nice like electronic kettle where like you can set the temperature and it has like presets and it'll like stay warm. He's, and he's now like, at pro level water heating. Blah blah. Look. Okay. I didn't buy a coffee machine out here because originally I, I figured I was only going to be out here for a short period of time. And I ended up being out here for like three years. So I deeply regret not buying like a coffee maker. So yeah. I have a $10 French press that I got from Ikea. And I'm like, eh, I might as well get a really nice kettle. So I bought a kettle. If I ever leave, what do I do with it? I will just bring it with me. I, I have a, a secret tip for you. AeroPress. When it comes to the coffee. For those of you who don't know, I've heard of aero presses. Explain them to me. It is a it is designed by the guy who did frisbees. He's like an aerodynamic engineer or whatever, and like it is a uh, plunger system similar to French press, but it's all about timing and temperature. And it takes about thirty seconds to make a cup of coffee, and it is uh, way smoother than most cups of coffee you get. It's very portable. I'm not necessarily plugging in like some kind of shield, but it's I've had it for years, and I think uh, most people that that under, like know what good coffee tastes like uh, recommend it. See, I was just gonna buy like a multi-hundred dollar espresso machine. And yeah, this is more like a twenty dollar, like. Well, I was, I was reading up on uh, a French press because I was like, I was very underwhelmed with my like caliber of coffee when I first yeah. got a French press, and I was thinking to myself like, how can I do this better? So I was like googling like, how do you French press? And they're like, mm. well, there's a specific temperature, and it's like you're supposed to let your water cool, and then you're supposed to pour it over the grinds. And the AeroPress like, is thirty seconds in the microwave. And then it's like you, you know, you, okay, microwave. Yeah, I don't own a microwave because microwaves are terrible. Wow. No wonder you needed the kettle. I that don't own a microwave. Okay, well, you can, you can kettle it. You should it not then. be microwaving stuff. You have an oven, you have a stove. You don't, you don't need it. You don't need a microwave. It's faster. Bad for you. I live in the future. I'm, I'm living the Jetsons life. Though my, uh, the stove at my place is convection. 
I believe mine is. I think most of them are. I think yeah. Kix's is convection as well, which is just like, I want gas, man. I just want my temperatures in Fahrenheit. I want, I want natural gas. Wait, are they not? Oh, yeah, that's right. I guess they'd be in Celsius. Yeah. Which is weird, because as a Canadian, my temperatures are also, it, like, they are in Celsius, and I don't understand them, because we cook yeah. in Fahrenheit. Really? Yeah, it's a very weird system in Canada. Learned no, nobody is going to tell you their height in centimeters in Canada, just as nobody's going to tell you their weight in kilograms, and nobody's going to tell you how to cook something in Celsius. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's helpful. Very... Good to know I could survive in some aspects of Canada. Okay, you could survive in most of it. Yeah, I would hope so. Alcohol's always in ounces, and then everything else is in liters. It's like nobody's going to be like, yeah, I'd like 0.6 of a liter of beer. They're going to be like, yeah, I want 20 ounces. <laughs> And then they're going to be like, yeah, but do you want a 20 ounce Pepsi? And you're like, how much is that? And it's like, it's like half a liter. A venti Pepsi. That's right, yeah. I learned that from role models. Isn't that when he says that everything is 20 and he's like, congratulations, you're stupid in like three languages? Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. It's actually a really underrated Is movie. that role models? I thought that was idiocracy. No. Um... But there was a good idi idiocracy reference from Milos last night. Though. Could you imagine if I was solo casting right now, by the way? Yeah, you would be doing this to yourself. I would, would literally be, be doing extremely this Extremely schizophrenic. Yeah, I, th we, we are... I don't have my watch on me. What time is it? It is... Uh, yeah, it's been about 20 minutes. We, so we've been... Tw we started 20 minutes ago. Imagine if I was... Imagine if I was solo casting right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> would definitely. Final play day of the, of the split. I've been solo casting. It'd just be a bang on episode. Well, what am I going to talk about? Come yeah. on, bring it in here. It would be. It probably would be. We're um, still just waiting on this one guy who. Uh, it's Psycho who has. Let's, a, let's has just do this 4v5. Let's just do it. Come on. Actually, against the rules. Psycho's. Oh, there now, we so go. We He's should. Again. And they're setting the bands, which are Maverick, Capito, Echo, and Mira. Yep. So, I, Maestro definitely going to be. Important here, of course, if he's allowed, which he is. Goyo. Goyo Maestro, definitely as well. Uh, will Latin America keep up its trend of following suit with EU and most importantly, NA, since they were the region that popularized this, largely SSG, which is that mute mozzie castle vigil fiesta. Castle's really gotten played a lot more lately. Yeah, did you see, um, it was actually shared on the subreddit, um, the pick rate for operators this season. And no, I'm I didn't. Pretty sure Castle was like fifth or sixth. That's, I mean, that's awesome. I, that's because Castle is always the penultimate example of what happens when it, when an operator can come in and out of the meta without being touched <laughs> by Ubisoft. So, like, I know because there's always like, the, oh, we've got to touch all the characters to kind of keep the meta moving. You don't necessarily have to. Sometimes a change over here can cause a change over here. So and, much touching, you think it was a Joe Biden rally? <laughs> Of all the regions to drop that joke right. on, though, would be like, it's right. like this one. Right. <laughs> uh, the, the fan base for this definitely is There's going to be so few people who get that, but I hope that the people who get it really the appreciate it. The few the proud. That. Speaking yeah. of Castle, he's actually going to get sixth pick off of for that Goyo for church here. But Monty going to come out so he can walk right up to the shields so they can be set on fire so he can dance backwards. Ah, yes, of course. I, too, put Hibana and Monty on the same uh, page, yeah? Basically the same thing. One's a yeah. one's a hard breacher, the other's a hard door walker. Attackers need to locate and defeat. Just says I don't need to open the wall, I got a door. I really hope people get that reference. Yeah. Stop touching people, Joe Biden. It's a touchy was, subject. There was uh there was a video actually that got unveiled today of him at a rally and it was yeah. like some old man went up to him and was like, What are you doing about pipelines? But Joe Biden's like adjusting his like jacket and like <laughs> It's, I'm just like, stop touching people. What are you doing? Like, it's obviously a power move. And we're not using it for, there's going to be people who are going to interpret it as like a wrong way. It's yeah. not, it's not the way you're thinking. It's just like, he just like, he touches your shoulder. Or he tries to do up your jacket or he adjusts your collar. And it's like, man, he has kits for that. Personal space. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's not great. Yeah. Someone, someone, yeah, never mind. I was, gonna say, yeah, I was gonna say something. I don't want to say it. But it's fine. <laughs> it's probably for the. Believe it or not, there's a lot of filtering that has to go on in this brain. Yeah. Anyway, well, I mean, you you just woken up. Yeah. Like literally just. I'm, woke I'm up. still. I you woke up and like frantically responded to me, being yeah. like, "I'm awake. I'm awake. I'm awake." Hold on. Hold on. I'll be there. Yeah. See if uh, Pino's gonna continue his aggression, but thankfully falling off. But I don't know. I mean, Latin America's so aggressive on defense. It wouldn't surprise me to see these guys fly up the stairs and try and fight Lenda here. But he's such a good fragger at the moment, like, that's not a good play, so. C4s instead go up and really don't hit anything. To be fair, Lenda had just been standing right about there. But that's why you need the black eye. You need the black eye to call it. There it is. There's the black eye, so just maybe uh, not placed well enough to call that out. Because it, it might have not even seen him rotate off the spot, but that is unfortunate because he, he pre-placed that, prepared for it, and still failed to hit it. But Lenda is ever so thankful. 
Now there's a nice breeze coming up from the basement. A smell of mildew, I imagine. We're seeing a lot, a lot of bucks do these these days where they're really taking advantage of like all the soft walls downstairs and hitting them through the floor because it, first off it saves on having to use Sophia's uh, lifelines, and second off it really just starts to position the defenders a lot more with that, with very little cost to yourself because it rarely gets punished. I mean that's what the C4 was for, but it just didn't work. Latin America is also one of those regions where you're, uh, and we will say this time and time again, where. Uh, both Valkyrie and Buck tend to be your top fraggers, so look very closely at what Psycho and Linda are going to be able to do. Yeah. Anyway, 90 seconds off. There's a Thatcher available on Clubhouse. This is going to make things a little bit trickier for the defenders as all that uh, all the utility that they have will be removed quite swiftly. And we'll have to evade another C4 or two. And see just Bucks from above. Julie over by Church. He's got impact grenades, he can impact trick. There's exothermic charges, that's it. The Hibana, if you remember, was sixth picked out for the Montane yep. here, and he's gonna find the very first goo mine as Elevate have a split push going on. It's gonna be from the bottom of main stairs, and then one person. Okay, from Almost the blue. Suspense. Oh. Well, the smoke's actually delaying him quite a bit here. KDS needs to pull something off here. The timing needs to be in his favorite movie. Muzi being on a three speed, knowing when to peek this. If he peeks it well or just holds him off long enough, that's a flank that doesn't happen. But it also means if they start to lose too many defenders, that's a defender who will have to rotate back for retake. But Will needs to do something soon. They've been just blowing through all the resources here. Psycho managed to get one. Julio following it up. And now it's starting to even up. Two for each as Elevate dominates the kill feed, traded right back at Elevate. We'll find themselves with the very last kill. Hunter claiming the scalp of Kamikaze. And Elevate will take an attack onto Church. Well, say bad. playing Monty doesn't help Will's uh, stats, but he still managed to pull off a kill there towards the end. I mean, good on him. This is definitely a, a situation where he, he plays that Monty well, and it's not a bad place to play. That's part of the problem. That's part of the reason you see Milos get so tilted when that wall is unreinforced, mm -hmm. because it is so problematic to deal with. Uh, especially if a Monty's in play, which was, of course, unexpected. You know, they didn't know that. They weren't, they're weren't. they not going to pocket a reinforcement for that. But at the same time, really well played. Obviously, the missed C4 could have been a big difference maker in terms of taking out Lenda early as well. Because, of course, that, that would have forced them to have to use a lifeline on the wall. That would have uh, changed things dramatically towards the end. Because, of course, man count would have been in uh, Ninja's Pajama's favor. So small things, and I like to highlight the fact that like one pivotal thing that happened earlier, while was not directly responsible for the outcome, it was you know that butterfly effect <laughs> that we like to see. So everything you do in a round can tend to matter. So try and do it to the best of your ability, please. We'll see Church trying again because well, it's a good idea, especially with Thatcher unbanned as you mentioned. Cash gets a lot harder to defend. Certainly not impossible, but more difficult. So you want to play Church more. Going to take advantage of one where it doesn't matter as much that he's being played. There's still going to be a, a Kaid here that, that he's going to have to contend with because Maverick being banned, then you do have to use Thatcher for the Kaid. You get three EMPs and he only gets two Electric Claws, but he can trick the one on Moto, especially with the radius increased. That means he can trick it from a further distance and be more comfortable while he does so. We don't really see it all that often anymore. I wonder why that is. Yeah, it, it yeah. it's not really like contestable necessarily yeah. because like uh, they can't shoot through the floor right there. Right. So it's a good spot for you to be. I think yeah. they might just be worried worried about getting pressured from the bottom of the main stairs, but I, I don't know. It's it's very odd. What do you think about yeah, it? You're not really, like, because I, I believe you could sit in a spot where, like, no one's really going to be able to do anything that important to you from the main stairs, and someone can just cover. Instead, he's actually going to use it on dirt. Uh, maybe he's expecting another Monty to come down and, and come down dirt, possibly, just because, well, like I said in the past, Will has played Monty, and he proved that first round. So I, I suppose a reasonable fear, and he can go pick up that Electric Claw if he realizes they're not bothering. And in fact, that might be enough. Like, they see that electric call, they go, oh, we're not going to bother with dirt. Uh, we don't want to waste the Thatcher EP on it. And then he could go pull it off, and they're not going to pay attention, because no one's going to check dirt late round like that. Oh, very close to getting the buck of Lenda as he enters through kitchen, loses most of his shins, and then gets out of there. Hard pressed to imagine a round on church, where you as an attacker lose that buck. There's lots of opportunities being taken by ninjas in pajamas. In particular, Pino manages to snag the Thatcher of Hunter, and then he gets traded right off. Good use of a lesion. You beat the judge. Yeah. Uh, Not, uh, uh, again? Yeah. No way. Oh, Psycho. This He's uncontested up here. 
This is really paying off. Elevate, they don't have a whole lot of tools to work with here. They have a little bit of resources. They have a hard reach, yes, they can open things up. But Lenda at low health is not going to help things as he's one of their strong fraggers. They, I imagine, have at least one grenade probably in his pocket, some lifelines. Mm -hmm. But none of that's really doing a lot to help them, say, take down Psycho. I like the double hard breach combo from Elevate, but it's obviously not working out right now as you've got two of their team inside of the escape tunnel. You see Psycho pop up just for a second detected, so if you are an attacker, you know that there's only three members at absolute best of Ninjas in Pajamas down below. Use these first contact, a frag grenade sails over top. The Carbine does so much damage, he'll get Lenda. There wasn't much of the buck left, as now KDS goes, and it's a flawless round almost for Ninjas in Pajamas. Very, very close. They'd only lost one. I mean, it really worked out. Elevate just didn't have a great backup strategy. They did actually go for dirt, despite the Electric Claw. Probably knowing that it wasn't going to be replaced either way, like, you know, that's a throw it and forget it sort of thing. So they really don't have to expend the one e EMP. But when you've only got a few people left, walking them through the same dirt tunnel, probably not the best strategy. Especially when you saw Souls' reaction time just wasn't on yet. He wasn't really, like, on top of it. As a, as a Thermite, you're not expecting to frag all the time anyway, so you're not necessarily... You're a little more focused on positioning and, and trying to get things progressing, helping things uh, get opened. But Elevate just losing uh, the players early, the two players, and not do, being able to do anything about the Mozzie. Really not great. And that could have just been due to poor droning, very likely. Uh, obviously, the Mozzie helps with that, but if you see a pest upstairs, mm -hmm. oh, there's probably someone on the other side of it. That's kind of a given. Then you know you need to take care of them. You can't leave them sitting up there. We will see them, of course, now how to go to, go to a different site. So they will go to cash. This is where it should, in theory, be a little bit easier for Elevate to open this up. There's a, a bandit that could try and trick, though. So despite having the Thatcher, you still do have to time things correctly. Very likely with the Zofia, if the bandit's any good at tricking. Because the way the kind of juggle works is you throw down the EMP to take care of the batteries that are there, but then you've got to hit, the bandit's going to be placing one down, so you've got to hit him with a lifeline through the drone hole to stun him with one of the stun lifelines. And then hope that uh, he can't finish his animation because that's going to stop him. It's going to pull him off the animation, similar to the way uh, that Echo pulls people off the uh, diffuser placing animation. And then, assuming you timed all that correctly with the Thermite Breach Charge, which you're very likely going to have to be placing while he gets slightly electrocuted. And then you get the wall open. But it is a, it is a bit of a symphony to conduct. <laughs> of course, you want to make sure they don't get any intel on what's going on here, and that's why you see them covering the drone hole, because, well, he doesn't have anything else he needs to be doing right now anyways. Might as well try and take down KDS's drone. Additionally, people might wonder why that door is barricaded in front of Kamikaze. It's so that when KDS goes to stun with the Zofia lifeline, the door will actually prevent it from going off, knocking Julio out of the animation. So there you go, you need to shoot it, which is exactly what happens. It goes prone and you know that if Bandit decides to go on in and actively trick it, there he's going to be in trouble. Symphony, I believe you called it? Yeah, that was definitely well conducted. Very well conducted indeed. So the wall has now been opened up, and only minimal utility expended in that process. You saw some of the Zofia lifelines be used, but then, as well, you didn't need anything else. Well, they're pretty stacked up here, but just trying to rotate the moment. Psycho, the one playing a little bit far and going to encounter probably Lenda soon. So it looks like he just barely slips through the door. Drone's going to find Psycho, and now it's on Lenda to just hold this for a period of time and see if he can get Psycho to walk into him. Very common place for a soft destructor to entry over by the gym and master side because you've got so much to play with, and your soft destruction can cut through those walls. The only real worry that you would have from being flanked would be on red stairs, and if a team situates a, a flank drone in that process, then you can keep control of gym master and also inside of construction. And by doing so, you're going to have an electric claw get tossed on over to the construction panels. Kamikaze's still got one of his artillas left. So we can toss it across if it gets taken out by an EMP. Frag grenade is ready. Might be able to claim something on the other side of it. It's going to go down and just narrowly evade the members of Ninjas in Pajamas. I like how he lined that up first using his ACOG. There goes a frag grenade on in, and the moment the exothermic charge gets put down, you've got two impacts from Pino there, and he can do what's called impact tricking, which is where that impact grenade will blow up, and in the same time you will be able to take out some of that hard destruction. But you're going to get a tiny portion of that panel opened up by one of the x Kairos. so Nip in some trouble, but not too much. You can't really go through that, but it is a peak hole on into the site. Lenda taking some damage earlier on. 
that's really what we're looking at right now, Devin. It's been a very slow round for both of these teams. Yeah, they need to blow up at least one of those shields to be able to speed things up, because once it blows up, it's going to cause fire, which they can't walk through. But with only 20 seconds oh. left, they're going to end up walking into it. Somehow, KDS is just inside of the site. Ninjas and Pajamas have fallen back far enough. But Pino walks up. Down goes Lenda. A second for him as the TCSG finds its intended targets. To the right, Will walks right in, takes out Kamikaze. A third for Pino now. As Hunter walks in, he'll take out the, the, the Goyo shield and begin to plant. Pino's got his pistol out. What is he going to be able to accomplish? Diffuser's down. Nobody from Elevate's going to be able to get it. Ninjas and Pajamas will stitch together two rounds in a row now. And very odd pacing at the end. But they managed to just hold off. I do wonder if the, the changed ADS times are slowing down the pace of gunfights, just because they're usually so prevalent here. That is true. Because uh, I do believe, uh, after having checked, I think it did come out today. Which, you know, it's a Tuesday, and that's not unusual. But that was a... I mean, there was pretty sweeping changes. We haven't seen them a lot in terms of which operators were affected um, by the specific changes. Not The general ADS changes affect pr most people. But as far as specific operators, like, say, Dokubi uh, with Echo, who's banned. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of who else got changed. Now, there's quite a few. Uh, Ella was changed. Uh, Ying. There's quite a, quite a few changes in there, but... It just n none of the operators that they're playing. Yeah. I do think... Uh, Not really meta operators, operators, I guess you could say. And, it, and it's meant can. to kind of be a slight uh, nudge to the meta, especially the Dokubi Echo thing, mm -hmm. um, so that Echo doesn't get banned as much. But it's it's brand new. People haven't had a chance to test it out much outside of the TTS, which isn't going to get, like, a ton of play, um, because, you know, that tends to be, like, a sort of peak when it happens and then tends to fall off a little bit in terms of people playing it. And, you know, you can do some scrims on it, which is not bad, but it's... Uh, it's probably unpracticed, so it may take some time for that to go into the meta. And uh, I, I do wonder, though, uh, if the patch we'll be playing on at Invitational will include that. I think it likely will, but that's on uh, Ubisoft to decide because it's going to be a specific land build. But it is something that you might want to practice regardless, just to have some better way to counter because Dugby doesn't get played by a lot of players, but the players who do play it tend to play it well, so you can play off that strength. Psycho catching a drone there it is a little too obvious in the spot. It, I mean, it's a nice spot, but it's a little too obvious. I do, uh, I do wonder about the resource management from Elevate, though. They, they really should have taken down those shields last round early. And you saw them at least use one of them to cut off a rotate. That was smart. But the problem is they, they had, for example, you had Hibana with three flashes in her pocket and still not clearing ADSs for them to make sure they could take out the shields. Things like that, like, for example, Lenda looking at one right now. Use those stuns, clear those ADSs, or at least check for them, and then take out these shields early. Punish them from using Goyle. And so that you know they're not abusing it against you because you saw how effective they were being able to play behind those shields with two TCSGs, which they're doing again this round. Now, obviously, cash is not the site; it's going to be Jim, but you still need to take cash. What was I've never actually heard that noise. Yeah, it sounds that weird, like, like one of the pipes. Yeah, that pang noise. That was yeah. Maybe was that's why it's a good uh, black eye spot. No one usually shoots up there. Oh, well. Elevate will do the mirror of what we saw from their uh, CCTV take. Wow. Except this time, Lenda's entry will be a lot shorter lived as he uh, finds himself dead at the hands of a C4. Pino will try to guard CCTV in cash. He's going to be inside of the cash portion. There's a little bit of damage done from Will as he walks on in, or runs in, rather. See, I mean, the ADS doesn't really look that slow from what we just saw. That was, and it's not even an angled grip on the TCSG, so. Will's going to take some damage that Electric Claw will continue to get juggled. Down goes KDS to Psycho and Nip rebuffing every single step that Elevate has into the site. Oh, these TCSGs, man. They are just flattening Elevate. And that's it. Flawless round. My god. Kamikaze and Pino in particular. Three to one. Ninjas in Pajamas made mincemeat out of Elevate on that round. It's starting to feel like round one was really just warm up for Ninjas in Pajamas. Because like, look at, did you see how quickly they ADS to the TCSG there? Like, yeah, you can tell me. You can, you can tell me the bad. It's fine. Yeah, no, I. The, that's fine. the thing is, a lot of people like worried about the ADS changes. It was like that was just bringing them mostly back to how they were before the animation changes. Mm -hmm. Like it was more like, oh hey, those got changed. We don't really want them to be changed. Let's change them back. Like, yeah. but they were also, I think, taking advantage of the opportunity to line up the guns a little bit better with each other based off gun type. We're talking about Castle earlier. We will see him for church here. Pino going to try that Legion that. This is bad mixed success. The Pulse, I don't know. Like, with how many uh, C4s they've been attempting, might be a good call, actually, to bring that Pulse. Just because they've been really using those to try and... Especially catch Lenda. Like, it seems like he is the target for C4s to catch him early. 
being the top fragger for the team, you can't, I mean, that's a worthwhile thing to do because you don't have to engage him with a gun to kill him. Just use a C4. That is the way to go, right? But uh, it hasn't always worked. It did work last round, I believe it was. Psycho, though, on the Mozzie again. Will he be upstairs? Certainly problematic for them to deal with because, well, they didn't deal with it. So they're really going to have to drone and clear top floor this time. Certainly can't just go for dirt. So far, their only success actually has been with that Monty on this push. Maybe they should go back to that. Legion was definitely a, a bit of a hampering on that in terms of like Monty obviously has to deal with that. But with a Thatcher to help clear, and if you're not as concerned about opening walls, uh, you can really kind of clear the way for Monty. There's not much Legion could do afterwards. I mean, you could throw a goo mine right in front of you, but that's not really going to help you that much unless it's like a choke point. Castle being used up here, though, does really indicate that they're going to be playing inside bar or top floor. If Psycho's just going to be playing top floor, that's fine. Those castle barricades give him the opportunity to rotate down a little safer through stage. If he's going to play in, the, in logistics, which he's likely going to do again, he can rotate in the construction connector, especially if he has a rotate hole created via his shotgun, and then he can drop down. He also has the hatch here in gym to drop down. But again, those castle barricades really help because then he can drop down onto billiards instead, rotate around through bathroom, down to main stairs. It's all about supporting that, and Julio, or Julio here, to help support that as well. It throws me off every time. I know. <laughs> Why you gotta do that? I, I feel you on that one. It's, uh... They used to be a caster that referred to him as Julio all the time. That used to work on this. <laughs> Underwatch is Pino. KDS might be able to walk in and just... Oh! Narrowly miss the head of the so Legion, close. and Pino gets away safely. I think he was expecting somebody from that position, and, well, he'll lay down a trail of somewhat uncomfortable breadcrumbs as he drops those goo mines in his wake, and he gets out of there. Oh. I cannot get over how slow this match has been between it's, these two it's teams. Really weird. It has been very slow. I mean, you remember the one we did the other day where, like, match three was just, like, complete chaos. Yeah, it was, like, elevate one? One elevate, yeah. It was yeah. just, it was absolute madness. But it was also border, to be fair. True, but this that was border. This isn't that slow of a map. I mean, oh. it's, it's a relatively small map. Yes, it's three floors on, like, border. On but. church, it's slow. Right, because there's a yeah. lot of things you need to do, especially if nobody's roaming. But as you can tell from the setup from Ninjas and Pajamas, number one, they were committing pres they were committing a presence offsite. Number two, they've got the castle barricade set up position. They've got the Mozzie on the board. They've got a lesion there. They can very easily hold offsite presence if they really want to. Finally, with one minute left, you're going to need to get the rhythm underway for Elevate. Psycho has not been discovered. Nobody is really in wait of him. As he will continue to walk up from Strip Club. You could catch Lendo with his pants down. The bathroom is an appropriate place to do that. It is indeed. There will be a castle barricade, though, that will stop the Mozzie from being able to do anything. And he knows it. And that's so where we're going to go. They, they really help here. So and go. another castle barricade. He's got a drone as well. But he, I, he has a drone watching his own flank. He sees the buck. Lots of damage being done and oh, unable no. to secure the kills. He'll see four. And he manages to get Lenda <laughs> with the explosion. Will is there, almost able to pick him back up. But now with 25 seconds left, you've attracted the attention of two members of Elevate, both of whom are watching you as best as you can. Ninjas and Pajamas have been indomitable over the last couple rounds. They've given up very little deaths. And that will continue as they haven't given one up for this round either. Still two members up above. Music guns down souls. Soft destruction will mean that Hunter gets spotted at the bottom of main stairs. And there it is. Another flawless round for Ninjas and Pajamas. I don't know why Elevate thought it was a good idea to come to Clubhouse. Maybe, as I you said, it's because they thought there was lots yeah. of information and lots to review on them. But right now, Nip are just banging on all cylinders. I was literally just thinking about that before you said that. And and I'm thinking, if it was, I don't remember how the bands went down, but if it was Nip to have last ban, it's possible that for some just completely befuddling reason, they thought it wouldn't be Clubhouse. Yeah. And the, this is why they don't usually play Clubhouse. Maybe that surely they won't go here again. I, I, I think you could say that about Elevate at this point, though. If the, the way they've been playing this, it just shows complete lack of confidence in their in their attacks on the map. And this, yeah, okay, it's a defender-sided map, but it's also very predictable where most people are going to be, even if they're on a roam. You see those castle barricades? You know what they're there for. I mean, yeah. you know where people are going to be playing. It's just this huge lack of confidence yeah, in, that, in the way they're playing, and a single Mozzie can just throw them way off. It just... I'd not seen the coordination from Elevate in terms of like, here's our attack. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. Like at first for church, sure. Like, okay, we know how to attack church. Everyone knows how to attack church. Like my grandma could probably attack church. But it seems like if there's anything that's like slightly confusing them, they're just like, oh God, let's drone for two two hours here. And really, let's, let's think about this. Let's try and figure it out. Like, let's send one guy in and see what happens, I guess. 
It's really not working. Their, their attacks on cash almost seem a lot more confident. Like they know, okay, we've got to get this wall open. Yeah. We're going to go around a construction connect. We're going to open that wall. We're going to pressure them from both sides. And then we're going to lose to a ton of TCSG gunfights. <laughs> And that part has been fairly predictable. Pino, it's, you can see them up there it was seven kills. A lot of those done with this Goyo. Uh, and then, but it's like, it's the double TCSG, right? Like, yeah. you know, it, it's always funny, like, pow, pow. When, we, yeah, when we had the guns being uh, reused, you didn't always expect to see both of them in play. But now that they, they are, like, whoa, 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 this whoa, combo. We don't, use, we don't say reused. We say recycled. Oh. Well, recycled implies that you reduce. You, you, you actually uh, of get rid of the original item to reuse it. Well, I mean, how do you know? That's true. It, it could be could recycled be, TCS. It'd be like a sham wow. Beware imitators. It's all, it's all got like someone else's initials on it. He like bought it at the Goodwill. Like, no. I got a secondhand TCSG. Uh, let's just lean into the boomer humor <laughs> here. Why not? At least that rhymes. Is fine. Julio going to be able to do this? Looks like it. He got it. Wow. Oh, the timing. Absolutely incredibly well done by Julio and a bit of a miss from Elevate. Lost the battery, but he's got one left in his pocket, so. Really well played. He's susceptible to getting shoved off of the wall from below. I think he's waiting for the electric claw. Electric claw. No more stuns left. That's tough for KDS. There's going to be much harder to get rid of that Electric Claw. Providing that there's an EMP still in Will's pocket, then, I mean, it's doable, because especially with how far back you see the Kaid playing. But the question is, does he have one? We don't know. Yeah, we're getting this. We've literally cycled every operator except for him. Yeah, and obviously uh, the spectator uh, is unlucky. in Latin America. He can't, he can't yes. hear us, and if he could, uh, we would have to depend on him speaking English, which he might not. Probably, maybe he may. Uh, probably a little bit. So now, if you're Elevate, what do you do? Well, you're going to have to go through construction, which means that your task of taking the site is considerably harder. I mean, just ask uh, Dark Zero in the TSM matchup how easy it is to just go through a single doorway after your hard breach does not work. I mean, mind you, it actually worked for TSM, but are these the same teams? Who knows? At least there there's go. some time left to work with. Like, this isn't the worst. One minute and the wall gets opened up finally, but you don't need to expend any extra utility if you're one of the defenders. You're flying blind as Elevate, now inside of construction. Some of your pieces assembled over by server, some assembled in construction. And that was Hunter. He's felled. So the Hibana will apply no pressure to that wall in construction. It means that you can play much safer as a defender. Souls will languish outside, waiting and watching. Another kill for Ninjas of Pajamas. It's been about nine minutes since we've seen a kill for Elevator. Are we going to have another flawless round in a row here? Oh, there you go. The there answer go. is no. Lenda finds one, but he's on one HP in a dream. It took an awful long time for Elevate to finally get a kill and almost a flawless round for Nip. That would have been their third in a row. That's, that's not ideal for Elevate. No, that's, this is a deflating matchup, and one that is extraordinarily slow, sluggish. Elevate now moves to attack on a map that is very clearly favoring the defense today. It was Elevate who banned the Capitao, so they're now, uh, or rather it was Ninjas and Pajamas who banned the Maverick, so Nip's not going to have a Capitao, but they figured they're going to be able to work around it. Yeah, They're going to bring both Art Breachers as well, because you don't need a Maverick. It's a very similar lineup, actually. Azofia is almost always a must. I guess the Sledge yeah. instead of the Buck, really? Yeah, I mean, and, and the other thing, too, is that Sledge is an operator that Nip likes a lot. Julio, Psycho, Kamikaze, we've seen them play on Sledge once and uh, once and again, back yeah. before Kamikaze was on Hard Breach duty when Wog was still on the team, so it's... Uh, for some reason, they like Sledge an awful lot instead of Buck. You, you'll see that. Why. A lot of times it's preference more than anything else with the guns. It, the thing is, with Buck, yeah, you get you sort of get a secondary shotgun, which is kind of cool. Uh, and you have like a, a decent primary, like the C8 in the right hands is really good. In the wrong hands, it's really not so great. But uh, it's really, the Sledge, you get the close and the long range weapon in a different aspect. Like instead of the shotgun, you have the SMG 11, which is. It's a beast of weapon. If you know how to handle it, it is really strong, as you've seen from many smoke players and mute players as well, now that he got that. Uh, but that combined with the long range capability of the L85, which is also a really great reliable weapon, makes it pretty good. And the timing is a little bit different how you use Sledgehammer if you're already really used to it. It makes a lot less noise. So if you're going to be doing a bit more entry work and noise is a concern for you, it is also helpful. It's those minor differences that make people choose. There are some players who will switch between the two, but very often you, you tend to stick to one or the other. But there are disadvantages to Sledge, namely his vertical pressure, uh, not going upwards so well. You tend to see grenades used for that instead. 
But speaking of shotguns there, it is nice to see the amount of secondary shotguns between uh, Mozzie, Gridlock, uh, Jackal, and uh, Mira. It's really kind of helped a lot more of the destruction in the game, which I think has really benefited. A lot more flexibility of sight play and a lot more rotates. Remember when there was no impacts and you had to use C4s for those? But Psycho, okay. he certainly is starting these off speaking of Sledge in the SMG 11. That is... Already much better than what we saw from Elevate most of the time. Much better. Showing their fangs as ninjas in pajamas. Enter with great panache. Yeah. Showing Lin uh, how he should have been doing it. London knows that there's somebody there. Obviously, the call coming in. But as we can see from the silhouettes, there's somebody above from Elevate. Say goodbye Ooh. to Lenda. Elevate have been putting in a pretty decent showing in the first half of the season, but they look absolutely lost today. And if everything goes according to plan for Nip, they're going to be up 6-1. to one. KDS will have to head down from the rafters above, and Musi is going to shoot just a little bit too early. Poor discipline. Out goes the C4. KDS will wait as you now see the Zofia rotate around. He's blind on information as to where the Mozzie is. Some bullet tracers will give him away, and Psycho comes to his rescue. Elevate. Oh my goodness, they are falling apart. Yeah, this could be a flawless round now on attack. Benizzi's pajamas. Minute 30 left, and uh, it's plenty of time when they've only got to find two. You know at least one's on site. The other one actually on the other site, so... Not a, a huge uh, ask here. The, the goo mines will slow things a little bit, but it's not like they can't come from multiple angles at once. It's really not going to be a huge pushback. And I think Hunter's going to have to burn half of his ammo just pre-firing every single angle, and Soul's just having to be quiet. Yeah. So Ninja Pajamas have all their utility left. They've still got tons of fragging potential. They haven't lost anybody. Elevate has probably one of the worst guns on defense in the hands of Souls, and then a Legion of Hunter. The good news is that on a site like this, a Legion is going to be invaluable over the final five... 10, 15, 20 seconds, and there's still plenty of time left on the clock for that Legion to be able to administer goo mines as much as he needs to. But there's going to be even more on his shoulders, and wow. Flawless attack. Flawless round six, one. Well, you got to give it to Nip. They're making up for the slow start with a fast finish. To borrow a saying from Counter-Strike Go, uh, Emzo, uh, people pay good money for this level of domination. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, whenever I hear Counter-Strike Go, for some reason, I think it's a board game. So I was going to say Counter-Strike Global Offensive, and then I was like, eh, let's say CSGO. And then I yeah. realized halfway through, I was like, oh, I blew it. Yeah. I blew it. It's okay. It's okay. You're not... You're not it's one of my favorite sayings, game. actually, in all of esports. It was, really? uh, it was a uh, James Bardolph who said it, and I was like, that's good. I was yeah. Like, oh, man. I was like, that, yeah, that like, tickled me pink. I was like, oh, that's really good. I was like, <laughs> so that's why you're so pink. I need to lift that. I, well, I figure I had I had the original one about the Joe Biden reference earlier. So what you do is you quote him, and then first yeah. you you first you say who it is, and then you slowly kind of taper that off. Then everyone eventually just thinks it was you. Yeah, and everybody will be like, "Wow, and Taro's so clever." And, God, you know, like, so I'm, I'm nowhere. I do not pretend to be profound <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. So anyway, that was a uh, all of these rounds. That was another flawless round for Ninjas in Pajamas. They really uh, singled off a lot of players of Elevate who just were not seeming prepared in the last five rounds. I wish we could have the scoreboard up here. By my count, in the last five rounds, Elevate is two kills, three kills. Yeah, this at this point, um, they might as well just type in chat. Like that, that might be all they can accomplish. Yeah, it, I, I think over the last since round number three, because there were there was one kill in round six, four and five were flawless, seven was flawless. Yeah. Three, I think there was two kills. So, if that's true, over the last four and a half rounds, uh, maybe they have because no, because they had they had five in the first round. So since the first round, they had five kills. Since the first round, they have had five kills. Yeah. And for those round round two through seven, five kills for Elevate. That is brutally bad. This that is, is uh, I believe, referred to as really terrible. Now, I got to imagine that this must be a map pool thing for Elevate, you know? The, well, we know it is for Nip, it, right? It, this it has is their, to their be, second right? home. This, yeah, I mean, you're, you're not kidding about that one. Uh, I, I think they would probably play it almost every play day if, it was, if that was still allowed. It was available. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you look at Elevate's uh, map pool over the maps that I've casted, uh, Elevate is not... I mean, I, I have not casted them play on Clubhouse. Yeah. So that means that unless you go back to, like, play day two or play day four, which I, 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 don't, have, I don't have all their maps. Right uh, I, I do, and then they didn't play it. Yeah, so there you go. So, I mean, we could even we could even see how this, this roster that was one time known as Chico's team, how how much do they play this map? Is well, it possible? Not play much in future. I mean, that's true. Or if you're a team, you're going to want to you know push a clubhouse against them. So, I mean, that's that's something to consider as well. But Elevate is just going to play farther back. It's another church defense for them with the uh, match in the line. Ninjas in pajamas, right now sitting on match point. 
and three points for them would vault them into first over FaZe Clan. FaZe Clan started the day with 12 points, Nip was tied in second with Ince and Liquid at 10 points. This guy should be huge. There's a possibility that FaZe might fall to the top two if they lose to Liquid in the next matchup and Nip wins this one, which at worst, Nip's gonna get one point. Luckily, it's only the first half, so that wouldn't be uh, you know, a terrible situation for any team. It just means it continues to be competitive for those top two spots. Yep. And I mean, Nip is obviously going to want to avenge what happened in Tokonami, where they weren't fighting at full strength. They had to get two yeah. substitutes. They're going to be able to do that at the Six Invitational, but naturally, they're going to want to do it wherever the location of the Season 11 Finals are. So... Anyway. You see a spread out play from Ninjas and Pajamas here, and a very good cam inside of the kitchen will give information to Elevate. C4 been expended from the Valkyrie? That's the question. Because he might be able to get tossed up and received by somebody from Nip that's playing inside of the kitchen. 45 seconds left, and Nip will now need to begin their execute. This is the slowest actual push we've seen from them, though. Yes, Nip were not as quick to the punch as they were last time. There's one kill for Elevate, though. All right. Let's start things off. Traded off oh. by Psycho. KDS emerges. He's going to look the no, wrong the way. No, you need to look down. Look down, KDS. Musi doesn't need to commit much at all, as now Will's going to take some damage, too. Default plant spot for Pino as KDS gets pummeled. Everybody from Nip is getting in on the action. Hunter's there to take one out on his own. Down goes the Habana. Souls as well. So Elevate now has a fighting chance, but they lose it. It's a 1v1. Hunter versus Julio. Four seconds left. Julio doesn't have Diffuser. He's not going to be able to get this frag, and Elevate will win based on time. Nip's not putting this one away yet but it's only the second round for Elevate in this matchup. They got a long way to go to claw back. I mean, it was a pretty simple strategy from Elevate. Hey guys, don't get shot early. Just play, play Turtle, don't give up anything to them. Let Nip push slow, burn time, and that's how they won in the end. I mean, it was a 1v1 and very close, but Hunter had the advantage in health. He's also a three speed, absolutely could have won that. He had the, the, the advantage in a 1v1. Just didn't take it, because it's a smart thing to do. And that's, I mean, that's the story of the whole round. Don't take a gunfight unnecessarily, because, well, we are sucking at them, and it, it has been flawless rounds, and we've barely been killing anyone. So if killing's not our forte, let's burn time. And then now that they're on the defense, they can do that. So what are we going to see from uh, Ninja Pajamas? Eh, let's take a page out of their book. Let's bring Monty. Yeah. Let's forget doing it slow. We'll take our slowest operator, but we'll walk it <laughs> continuously. It doesn't matter how fast the ADS speeds up, yeah. as long as you're a shield that never needs to drop. Yep. <laughs> Just keep it up. So we'll see how that goes for uh, Cash now, though, of course, they can't play Church again. So we had seen it previously uh, being used for a Church attack, but with this one, it tends to depend a lot on those stairs. The stairs inside Garage up to the rafters is generally where you're going to see Monty go up. And actually, without a uh, Legion in play here, he should be able to do so relatively uncontested. However, if they anticipate a Monty, which they likely won't because it was a six pick, uh -huh. they can set up some Goyo shields. And the nice thing about those is you're likely to have an Evil Eye in Spare that you could set up as well to pop those as soon as Monty gets a little too close. And that will certainly slow him down. It's sort of like uh, the way Capitals use on the rafters, but in reverse which of course he's banned. So Goyo the only one bringing the fire in this match. But still, they have the tools here, they just need the knowledge. But they don't likely have it, so they're going to be setting up similar to what we saw from Ninja's Pajamas, which is a lot of shields to fight doorways. Oddly enough, too, we had the TCSG twins for defense on Elevate. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, Ninja's Pajamas. Instead, we have Lenda, by himself without uh, Kaed, with just the Vector. And it is good to see that things have been diversifying. At very first, when uh, when we see Goyo play, most people were playing with you can TCSG. You can say Kaid. I thought I did. You've been saying Kaid. You can oh, say yeah. You're I, I actually ingrained myself to try and say it properly. You're safe here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's because I pronounce everything else wrong on purpose to tilt Milos. So I, I thought I'd give him that as a peace offering. No, and then he doesn't even say it that way half the time. I mean, so, uh, at least we don't want to say Kaid. Yeah. You know, so I, you, you don't know how bad I want to sometimes. Kate. I want to say Kate as well. I still, I still won't say Montaigne or Dokubi correctly. I just, I, it's never going to happen. Montaigne. I can't. Yeah. I, say Monty. Yeah, Monty. Monty. The full Little Monty. The full Monty. Well, it's Psycho on it this time, so we'll see if we get the full Monty. <laughs> Bullet's very narrowly missing the head of Hunter as, yeah, you're absolutely right. It has been much slower for both of these teams, and I was going to comment because you said that the church take from Nip in round eight, the round that just happened, that, uh, well, it, this time, you can't really hide as effectively. The moment that they start collapsing in on you, yeah. you have to fight your way out on a cash church site. So that's something that you need to keep in mind of. And, uh, well, you've lost a part of the wall. Uh, that always helps. 
There's an exothermic charge as well onto the garage wall, so if you want to begin to flush out whoever's playing up on the rafters, well, you can go for it now, and that extendable shield is a, a very unique sound, and you know what's coming your way. Souls is going to get pushed out. The moment that he starts to fall off of the Montane, this call is going to go in, and, well, this is a really hard spot to be in. Down goes the shield. Psycho's going to push in. He can't hit the shots he needs. He's taking so much damage. How does he lose that? Not a single bullet lands on the souls. No, no, no. That's not supposed to happen, ninjas in pajamas. You managed to correct it, though, as Pino sprints on up. There's the three speed. He's able to close that distance very quickly. He starts on the wall that leads into the server room into CCTV. Elevate is mostly holed up now inside a cache and construction. They are in a tough spot, and this is what I said. The moment that they start to collapse on you in sight, you have almost nowhere to go. You get buried alive. Final 30 seconds. Match still on the line for Ninjas in Pajamas. They hold a 4v3 advantage. Angles being held, and because these ADS changes, teams might be a little bit more reluctant to just... Well, aim down sights and go for a push. There's an evil eye camera that will be watching the entryway from the balcony. Musi finds a third kill for Ninjas in Pajamas. Will's in a very good position to be able to stop someone from pushing in. He'll connect with one. He'll get collapsed upon. There's only one member left to find, and a C4 is going to go out. Will it connect? Yes, it will. Hunter, by the skin of his teeth, will save the round for Elevate. And they'll manage to put two now in a row. So far, it's been very, very dicey, especially from Hunter. They what what a play. They really should have been able to stop it. Again, it's those shields. They just don't seem to deal well enough with those shields. And that was always the fear, right, with Goyo coming to Plural League, is just incapability of dealing with so many shields in play. And that's really the only reason. Like, literally, if it had been him without a shield, he would have just been pushed. He wouldn't have been able to throw that C4. And good use of that. But, man, he is really just barely winning these rounds and keeping in it. But that's the thing is, after so many wins in a row by Nip, you, you would think that Elevate would have been crushed at this point morally. But the fact that they're coming back here, e yeah, they're barely eking out these wins. But that's enough to really stop Ninja's Pajamas' momentum. We're seeing them really have to slow down and try and find picks. They're doing a good job of it. It's just the last pick they can't seem to get to in time. So time management, really the struggle here. Ninja's Pajamas need to find just a stronger foothold faster to push from. Luckily for them, now it has to go to Jim. They, in theory, could do it a lot faster. Because yes. Cash shouldn't be as well contested. They could take that. Blowing open the hot tub wall tends to offer a lot of opportunity very quickly. So if Elevate can't contest it well, they should be able to close this round out. They're going to have the shields again. They are going to have the, the the Cade, as you said. Uh, Cade. <laughs> uh, he prefers Cade. Yeah. He, you asked him. He'd be soft if you were listening. Give us strength and tell us. No, they told me. Right. Right. They actually told me a yeah. long time ago that there was intended to be Kite. And if you listen to Harry in the Six Invitational uh, Road to SI thing, where you know, like he gives a he gives like a brief like synopsis of all the operators, he says Kite. So I don't. But he's also British, so I have no idea. I can't emulate his accent. Anyway. Let's, uh, let's see what Nick can do with this. They've been a little sluggish. They should, on numbers, have come away with, come away with a victory. Um, almost said cumin. I've got spices on the brain, my man. Yeah. So, like with most gym and master takes, you will usually start over in cash. Most teams now, as the meta is currently uh, currently favoring this uh, this heavy offsite presence for Clubhouse, you're going to want to hold yourself up somewhere around where the site just was, given that it was a cache CCTV site. KDS will be supported by uh, full reinforcements, so no easy access into this cache room at all. Actively bandit tricking will be Hunter. KDS will be with them, and they will also have a Goyo shield there from Lenda. So there's a lot to cut through if you're ninjas in pajamas, and the frag grenade's actually going to go off. That's an ash charge. Never mind. There is no frag grenade on the board for Ninjas in Pajamas. But Hunter's in low health, and he's been the clutch player the last couple rounds. Yes, and his C4 single-handedly saved the team, but the call has been made from Elevate to abandon ship. Oh, at least everybody but KDS. He re-engages and finds Pino looking for a second, will not be able to get it, and he gets traded off through the openings onto that top of red wall. It's been quite a fight over uh, just cash side, though. One for one. As Pino is removed and KDS is gone, I'm very happy with that if I'm Elevate. Because now those X-Kairos, looking like they've all gone off where they were intended, so you might not have necessarily needed the utility or the gadgetry, but now you're going to have to get Kamikaze to give a safer passage on in. 
And then we'll also likely go over to that jacuzzi wall. Not a lot of time though, one minute, that's it. Well, they're gonna have to make a push here quickly. At least they still have one hard destructor left. Not sure if he has any thermite charges. But you really need that wall open on Hot Tub if it's not already. Hmm. That's really gonna be the problem. You see the shields as well doing their work. Been it's been very effective for both teams to take advantage of these. And Lenda being able to play aggressively on the window here. It's gonna be a little difficult for Psycho to be able to push in. So Nip kind of stalling out, 30 seconds left, and they really need to be doing a lot more than they are doing right now. It's a 4v4. Hunter, at least at low health, could be finish offable, and that would give them one man advantage. But it looks like they're just not really sure how to approach this at point. They're hoping again for Elevate to give them a free pick. And Elevate have been doing mostly not that, but Hunter says, I'm in low health, I'll sacrifice myself and Lenda next to go. So two for Ninjas in Pajamas to get this ball rolling and look to finally get the remaining two points that they can have now that it's going to be a draw at worst. Ninjas in Pajamas collapsing upon Elevate. And after losing Pino, they sacrifice him blood for the blood gods. Ninjas in Pajamas get every single kill after that, and they will secure the full three points sitting atop Latin America after what looked like a much more dominant start against Elevate. 7-3. Nip, you see it on your screen. I mean, to be honest, it really should have been a 7-1 at the end. It was just Hunter with a couple of clutch plays that managed to be able to pull it off, but Ninja Pajama is looking very, very dominant on Clubhouse. This is definitely a map you don't want to take them to if you like winning. Well. <laughs> yeah, that 